Hey everybody, again, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. In this video, I have a custom-built computer here. It's an MSI-themed build here, MSI motherboard, MSI graphics card, MSI closed-loop water system, 360 RAD, MSI branded RAD. So basically, what's going on with this computer is it, uh, it is severely overheating under load. It jumps from, from 30C, 31C straight up to almost 100C as soon as you put it under load. <laughs> Probably pretty safe to say that it's the actual uh, water cool system. And again, I've said it so many times, uh, not, a, not a fan of them. But you know, because, well, there's no signs at all that there's anything wrong with it it's really not a good way to discover that your, your that your cooler is not working or your water cooler is not working because basically there's a period of time there that you don't even realize it's overheating you could be gaming or anything or rendering and your computer would all of a sudden shut off and you're like well what the heck and you'll turn it back on and you'll try it again and it'll shut off again and you might try that two or three times and try to wonder what the hell's going on and and it, you have to keep turning your computer on and then you end up got, getting some software that measures the temperatures eventually. Then you start to see that you're overheating. But you've already put your processor through some really high temp cycles before you've you know, discovered that your cooler was bad. You can't see the water flowing. You can't see how much water is in the, in the unit itself. You have no idea if the pump's working. Even in your BIOS, it might show an RPM on your pump. Doesn't mean it's pumping anything. So, so many things can go wrong with it. I like water coolers that have at least um, clear tubing and maybe a flow gauge where you can see it's actual spinning. So that way you know that your water is flowing through the system. You know, any coolers that have fill, fill ports uh, would be the way I would I would go fill ports or or reservoirs that you can fill that you can see the water these guys right here they do a good job but when they go you put your CPU at risk it takes you a minute to figure out that your cooler is not even working anymore so this is the case with this I'm going to remove this thought I'd take you guys along for the ride I'm going to replace this with an with a comparable air cooler actually I would show you guys the temps on this but I don't want to turn it on again and put that poor processor through through that again. So I'm going to start off here by uh, I'm going to figure out where this pump plugs into because I, well, it's not a pump actually. I think the pump is on the radiator. So I want to take this water block here. I think this is the RGB header here wire that goes into this block. So I'm going to follow that around, find out where it's tapped into, and unplug it. I might have to stand this up to do that. So I've got it stood up here and I'm kind of playing with the wire that that I was just showing you that goes to that water block. And I can see here, oh, how about that, it's funny. It comes out the back and it goes right back in to where the motherboard is. I'm gonna go ahead and take off these, take off this block. I like to take the block off first before I take off the rad. That way I can just set this out of the way once I have it off, and then it's clear where I can just take off this big radiator here. If I take this big radiator off first, then I have to worry about it fumbling around and me having, I can't hardly set it to the side because of the shortness of these cables. And then, so I just like doing it in this order. So we're just gonna be taking off this heat sink here. You know, it's funny, guess what I see right here? Ha, huh. thermal paste, look at that. Thermal paste. Hmm, somebody's been doing something. Let's see what we're looking like here. All right, Intel CPU. And it almost looks like fresh compound. So, it'd be my guess that he's replaced the compound on this, thinking that, that might have been the problem. But actually, the problem is with this with this pump, most likely. Okay, these spacers just pull right off. 
Okay, and there goes the back plate dropping out. That's what we want to see. Well, I think we can go ahead and stand this up. Back plate right there. So my plan of attack on this, you know, I could drop the whole radiator, fans and all, but I still have to remove the fans from the radiator. See, I want to keep these fans and remount them up top, but I got to get rid of the radiator. If I drop the whole radiator first, these fans are on, a, on short cables. Well, they're not short cables, but they've been wire managed, wire managed in the behind, in the, on the back of the case. And I don't really want to undo all that wire management, really. So I think my plan of attack here is going to be to remove the fans first from the radiator and let them hang out in this area. That'll give me access to just removing the radiator. Uh, and I can leave the wire management of the fans as it is. So let's try that. Ooh, ooh, and I don't have to, don't, or do I? I don't think I have to take out the video card. That would be amazing. Let's see if I can get that. Oh yeah. Okay, that's all the fans kind of taken off and laying sort of out of the way there. Radiator's next. So I think what I could probably do is just turn that this way. Got the radiator screws here. Let's see if we can get those off here. Now I know this radiator has, a, has the built-in pump and it's got a cable coming and going somewhere on the back side of this. I guess I should have located that first, but I th I'm pretty sure it goes to the CPU or the yeah pump. It's right here. So I'll pull the pump. And now I can pull the entire water system out of the case. I do hear water in it when I shake it. Honestly though, in all honesty, it don't sound like there's much water at all in this. So, I mean, how would you know unless you open it up? I didn't have to undo any of the wire management with these fans. All I have to do is stand them back up and mount them. And the wire management is still done for me, so I don't have to worry about messing with that. So once I get those mounted back up there, then we can look at putting on the, the air cooler. Well, that's why I always keep a box of extra screws around for times like this. I don't, that's so why I need some fan screws and I need 12 of them. I don't necessarily have to have 12, but 12 leaves me with about another eight or so. I've got more someplace, I'm sure. All right, and I've got it in black. Black case, black fans. Hey, keep the theme, right? Tell you what we'll do. We'll put the screws in loosely so we can slide the fans around and adjust them where we want them before we tighten them up. How about that? Now, this should work. Now that I see these fans are going to work just fine, go ahead and put the other ones in. And we'll tighten everything up and that'll be it for the fans. Fans are installed and looking good. Very nice. This was the RGB that we had unplugged. Go ahead and plug that back in. Here we are. Okay. I right, clear everything out and we can go ahead and install our air cooler. I'm going to clean up this processor, apply my own thermal material. Okay, I've cleaned the processor off there. It's an i9. 10900K, be quite slim. 150 watt TDP, 
That's an 85 watt TDP processor, so. Just snug them down, don't have to be super tight. The heat sink here and just set that right on top of the processor nice and gently. Line up the holes on the bracket on both sides. Then we're going to take the screws that are provided. Now we can fire it up and check out the temps. All right, we got the PC powered up. Got all the fans going, I got OCCT running, we're stress testing the processor right now. Our highs are getting only into the lower 60s, upper 50s, 100% load. That is a huge temperature difference from the upper 90s, 100C I was getting with water cooling. So this indeed was the problem, is the water cooler that it gave away and another example everyone of how water coolers can mislead you it can be really detrimental honestly to your processor if you don't properly diagnose it your processor can go through some unnecessary stress possibly even damage before you figure out exactly what's going on let me know what you guys think down in the comments I know I've done a lot of water cool uh, replacements with air cool uh, but this is just what's been coming through my shop and hey I'm just gonna you know record it share it with you guys share the information be weary of water cool and always keep an eye on your temperatures when water cooling this is performing flawlessly now temperatures are beautiful this is the job done I'm Tim with Tim's Computer Repair see you next time